So I was double checking something because uh, um, it sounded a little odd. So I went to double look, double check something on the jQuery mobile website. I was uh, refreshing myself here uh, for the position to actually we have origin and window. So window is one, but we were using one that I guess my notes are wrong saying open, but the only options here are origin or window. So sorry about that. So what I've got here is when we created, for example, line 40, L pop-up, error, sign up, mismatch, position to open. That's not a valid one. Uh, I double-checked uh, the jQuery documentation, jQuery mobile documentation. Position to is either window or origin. So if it doesn't recognize it, it doesn't recognize it, it ignores it and puts it back to window. Window seems to be the default, which is in the center of the window. Position to origin is supposed to be that when you click on the, the button that triggers it, that's where the pop-up appears, um, according to the documentation. Uh, so we, we did that twice, perhaps. Um, uh, I don't know, just, just once, I guess. So on um, the mismatched password, I have position to origin. And then on the uh, account already exists, I have position to window. And then on the uh, success, I didn't specify one, so the default is window. But if you want to be specific, you can add to it also. And on that one, the order shouldn't matter. So if you've got transition to pop, you can then do comma, quotes, position to colon uh, origin, for example. Origin or window. Window is the default. So the, uh, the order here doesn't matter. We had uh, the position to first and then the transition and vice versa shouldn't matter. And you saw it was completely optional. Actually all of these options are optional. That's why they're called options. <laughs> so by actually setting them we override the default. I made it pop up. I made it animate pop up and then we're trying to set a position. So, we'll, we'll do this then for uh, the PG login. A uh, quick reminder if, uh, before you leave, if you didn't uh, sign in, the sign-in sheets are right up here for you to sign in. Okay, so uh, I want to do something very similar over for the PG login. It's in two, it's in two phases again. It's got to be um, HTML first. First we write a little HTML div uh, to display the message about, you know, wrong password. And then we write the JavaScript to make it pop up. So I'll go back to the HTML. Before that, does anyone remember the secret trick in Notepad++ to view two screens at once, two, two files at once? Right-click the tab, yep. So if you'd like to, you can right-click the tab, move to other view, and view both the codes at once. On mine is too small, uh, this screen, for you to see it right, so I usually won't do it, but if you feel it's useful, you can right-click a tab, move to other view. And then to put it back, don't click that arrow. You do, again, right-click, move to other view. Anyway, go back to the HTML file, and let's find PG login. PG login. Before the end of article, as is the standard, we need to then create our div here. And this is going to be in, uh, an easy kind of div. Um, easy div where we can um, give a simple message. So div data role pop-up an ID, well a class first, uh, UI content, then the ID I like to keep the ID last, the class second last, personally. And here, these will be pop-ups, so pop, log in,
We'll actually have two pop-ups. One is if the password is incorrect, and one if that user doesn't exist. Maybe they forgot, they never created the account, they're trying to log in, and that user doesn't exist. So we'll actually need two pop-ups. Uh, it doesn't matter the order, but we'll do here first. Uh, pop log in uh, not exists. I'm going to copy that div and paste it because we're going to need two with different IDs. Pop login not exists. Well, actually, we're being very verbose. Uh, pop login error not exists. And the second one we'll call. wrong password. This is a pop-up in the login screen which is an error, specifically wrong password. Or this is a pop-up in the login screen which is an error that the account doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. So the actual message that will appear to the user, account doesn't exist. And the other possibility is wrong password. <clears throat> what does it say when you try to log into an account and what are the possibilities? How do they say it sometimes? Wrong <clears throat> password. You typed it wrong. Whatever way you want to say it. I, I see more and more many of these apps are being very, very friendly. And they tell you like, you know, oh snap, wrong password get very friendly. So whatever uh, syntax you want to use, style, is fine. We've got these pop-ups, one for the password not existing, and one for the wrong password. We'll go over to our function login in JavaScript to make these pop up. So I'm going to save my HTML. I'm going to switch to the JavaScript uh, in over in your function fn login. Very similar type of function in that we've got. Um, the um, if else statements. Our very first if statement here is the one that says user does not exist in the console. And we've got a pop up to make that pop up. Here is again where we can decide do you want to call the HTML node directly or do you want to call the JavaScript object version of it? Well, if, we, if we're calling the JavaScript object version of it, we need to create the JavaScript object. So back at the top. We've got all of these objects we've created, so we'll create the objects for pop error login. I'll pop L pop login not exists is equal to the selector pop login not exists. What's that? Was the word error in there? Yes. L pop login error. not exists. And then another one, L pop login error uh, wrong password. Question? How come we assign that in the assignment function, not in the last 
Uh, we're doing this one as a, we're doing, we've done all of these as global functions so that we can use these elements in any other function. If we create the variables in a function, they can only be used in that function. And it might be okay to do so. Oh, I see what you're saying. I'm putting it in the wrong place, huh? Function sign up. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, yeah, I was thinking of this. So, minus 10 points for everyone, because no one caught this an hour ago. Um, we. Yeah, it's all going in the function sign up. I meant to put it out there on the global scope. It worked, but here it wouldn't work. So, good eye right there. Okay, so if. If you don't get what's going on, let me finish writing it and then I'll explain. Um, we're putting it in the wrong function if we if we leave it like this. Let me just write it and then I'll explain what's wrong and then we'll fix it. Pop login error, wrong password. Okay, so any any variables, any objects you create in a function basically can only be used in that function, can be referenced in that function. So if I wanted to use L in email sign up um, in my login function, it wouldn't work because this uh, item, this variable is a part of the scope or the world of this function. And it worked fine for us over here when we had these error messages because I needed these errors to happen in the moment that this function happened. So that's fine. Inside. But if, I, if we keep these two right here, this will not work in our login uh, function because these two either should be in the function of function sign up or what I meant all along was that all of these error messages uh, all of these error messages, I meant all four of these, five of these, to be up there when we created all of our global uh, variables, global scope variables. So this should work to cut them all or move them uh, up to the top. Now we'll have to be careful with our commas and all of that. Um, so all of these pop-ups I'm going to move them out to the top over that L user email, L button log out. We can literally move them. Did I mention this last time? You can select code and you can just move the code. And we have to be careful here because I have to end the statement right there. These variables only mattered to exist as long as this function was running, function sign up, capture what's in the fields and the state yes so why would the sign up the error sign ups go in the global one versus just specifically in the function for sign up i may want to make those pop ups pop up for other reasons okay. now putting it out in the global scope then does mean that they're using more memory cuz they're out in the global scope so i guess maybe more efficiently we would want to have those within the functions because then they only exist as long as the function is running. It's kind of, you know, what's the expression? Two, six of one, half dozen, or the other. Yeah. So one reason to put them all together in one spot is, uh, you know, we can access, they're all listed in one place for me to change them or access them or reference them in the future. But technically, putting them all out in the global space out here does have them take up more resources. So either or will work. Short answer, just I'll put them out here. Um, so that means I need to fix that comma, and I need to fix this semicolon. That's why I would vote for the it really is up to the person and what works best for them but if you're finding that 
that's a great way to do it. Yeah, definitely. One way, one reason to not put var at the beginning of each one is, yeah, it saves three bytes multiple times. Three bytes is three bytes, which might be less than the errors and the problem of errors. So both ways are fine. Sort of maintainability, though. You can, you can bet people coming behind you that are going to have to maintain that code will forget to do that exactly that thing, and then they'll have an error and they'll spend time correcting it, finding it. I, I think it's, to me, I, I don't think it's a good use of saving the three dollars. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. That uh, if that works, that works. Either way works. So I'm going to fix that now. Do you guys know this trick? That if you select a bunch of um, lines at the same time, you can tab or untab them all at the same time. And what you can do is you don't even have to select really the whole line cleanly. You know, I can select from halfway to this line to halfway to that line, and tab all of that together. It's kind of fun, interesting, because I can select like the very last line, the very last character, and the very first character, and all of that can be tabbed at once. So if you ever want to line up a lot of things and your tabbing is annoying, tabbage, tabbing each line, you can select all the lines at once and just tab all the lines at once. Or shift tab to go backwards. Well, that is, of course, if one believes in tabbing, because there's also the double space method to do it. Okay, so all of this is just setting up what we've already done, which is setting up these uh, variables, these objects. And then we just need to call them, we just need to use them inside of the function. So we'll go back to our function um, for login and invoke these. Save that. We'll go back to our function sign up. Let's see, function sign up, or login that is, function login. And what we were getting at was over here. We have this console log output. Um, now we need to call the element which is l pop up error log in we'll do first not exists we're doing we're in the section about the oh actually right up here does not exist oops let me back up user does exist back here does not exist in the first if l pop error I'll pop log in error. Uh, we do the pop up method and then we do the and then we do the uh, actual open with options. So dot popup method, same line, but then with the um, the options, the arguments. What's that? I misspelled it. But if you misspell consistently, that's not, that's not an error, but it is misspelled. Let me go back and fix it. Yes. So in my original, I didn't create an, I didn't write to the R at the beginning, but as long as I write it wrong every time, it's not wrong. You see the auto complete completed it for me, so it was fine. But let's be more correct. So yes, uh, log in error not exists pop up and oops and then we've got the and we've got the open argument the options and 
I'm just going to add the transition because the default is window quotes transition flip. You can test this um, by going to the login screen and trying to log in with a brand new user that doesn't exist. That's how we can trigger this one. We're, we kind of already know that we're going to do the exact same thing with the uh, password doesn't work, but it's often a good idea to <coughs> test your work as you go through it just in case. You saw all of these little misspellings that I'm doing, so I know for myself I need to, to check it, just in case. I'm going to run that. I'm going to go directly to... I'm going to go directly to the login screen. I'm going to log in with Mickey at mouse.com password Pluto go account doesn't exist. Now, we could do a couple of things here, thinking one step ahead. I'll, we'll do the other one in a moment. Just a little digression here. Uh, when you're dealing with other apps or websites, then it says account does not exist. What are sometimes the possibilities that happen at that point? Uh, allow them to create an account, yeah. So, uh, perhaps as the homework, that's what I'll, I'll assign you to do. We already have the skills to be able to do that based on what we did previously with uh, the successful login. So let's put a pin on that. For the moment, uh, it's just telling you uh, the account doesn't exist. So okay, I'm going to close this, I'm going to try again. Uh, whoops, I misspelled my email. Uh, it's not quite set up to tell you you misspelled your email. Well, nothing tells you that, actually. Nothing tells you you misspelled your email. It just tells you this doesn't exist, right? But other websites or apps could tell you, account does not exist. Would you like to create one? So that's from what we've done so far. That's something that you could figure out. The other thing I want to do is, okay, uh, the account does exist. I have been trying to... I did create one called H, and the password is H or something. So, okay, wrong password. That's clearly the wrong password. I need to deal with that one. The account does exist. I didn't get that error pop up, but the password was wrong. So we've got ourselves set up this far. It's a hop, skip, and a jump to make that pop up appear about your password being incorrect. So that would be a few lines down checking the password. Does the password you're trying to log in? with match the password that's stored. No, which is else. Passwords don't match. So here's where we've got our L pop-up login error wrong password. exact same arguments would work fine. Open it, options, transition. So you can save that and run it and check that. Try to log in with an account that does exist, but the password is wrong.
check if mine works. Uh, <coughs> refresh all of that. Log in. So I'm going to log in with H. I have to remember my password. Yeah, there it is. So with a uh, wrong password, you get the pop-up of wrong password now, not just some console output wrong password. Now here's the example also. I know I created that account with that email. I can't remember my password. That's when another site or another app would have a mechanism to retrieve or reset your password. We can't quite get into that right now. That's much more complex. Um, so at the moment, uh, our login and logout system is fairly complete. I would say like 90%. And the last 10% is that about like, you know, retrieving, retrieving or resetting a password. Um, you should have now the ability to, to test it all and log in and it'll tell you you've logged in with this account. We've got the log out, the log out, confirmation, it takes me back to get started. Log in has been reset. I can log in with some of these other ones. Log in with the JJ account. As we test this stuff, and maybe if you run it completely, if you if you are in the habit of closing it and running it, uh, you will then quickly see. Well, I have to keep I have to keep logging in. That's annoying. Even if you don't do it that way, and then you refresh, unless you've refreshed from this screen here, uh, it's going to keep asking you to log in again. But well, we're going to deal with a system that remembers that you've logged in. Uh, right now it's not remembering that you've logged in, so that's coming up next. I just want to make sure all of these pop-ups work, then we'll go on. Uh, if your pop-ups worked, great. If not, uh, call me over, but it should all work, and then we'll deal with um, remembering that you've logged in. So we were just working on the login screen, and you should have either a pop-up account doesn't exist if we put in a, an account that doesn't exist or a pop-up if we put in a wrong answer. Yes. Okay, so if that works for you, we'll go on. If it didn't, uh, speak now if I ever hold your peace. Here's our code so far. When we, when we continue, we need a way to keep track of you have logged in, therefore don't ask to be logged in. Yes, that's what I'm saying. 
All right, so if, uh, if it does work to, to do this sign-in, I want it now to remember that I've signed in. Uh, one way is just to create a simple uh, value that says, you know, is logged in, you know, true or false. Yes, I've logged in. No, I haven't logged in. So a, a simple kind of like true or false to keep track of being logged in or not. Now, the uh, variables that we work with only exist as long as the app is running. We need some way to store this locally so that it keeps in memory. What am I talking about? Local storage. Local storage is permanent. Local storage is a way that it does save it in there. Now, of course, it's not fully permanent because you can uninstall. You know, eventually when we get it into an app, you can uninstall the app and then it goes away. Or in the browser, you can, you know, completely delete all cookies and it can go away. But local storage compared to a variable is much more permanent than a variable. I think iOS also will clean it up if it just runs low on memory to clean up local storage on your behalf. I think it when it reaches a limit, I think most browsers when they reach some limit, they will uh, they will clean it out, which is usually in the double digits. With this kind of data, we're not really gonna probably hit it, but it could. That is a consideration. So we're gonna use local storage to uh, to store some simple information that we have logged in uh, so that it can keep us logged in. And then we need to check when the app runs, when the project runs, have we logged in, yes or no? And if we have logged in, we'll just take us directly to being logged in. Don't ask us to log in anymore. So we need to do this in a in a several places. Um, because this is a kind of uh, variable uh, that is not going to be like one of these JavaScript variables. We don't actually have to kind of declare it. We just use it. So we're f we'll first set it up uh, in our login, function login. If we successfully logged in, we had it all right here, um, right here, um, yeah, right here. So this if about comparing the passwords, the one we're trying to log in with and the one that's in memory, ultimately, once if this if is satisfied as true, it does then take us to the login, the PG home. So all of it happens here. Here's where we're going to set the local storage object, the local storage cookie, that, yeah, a person has logged in. So the way we'll do this is simply local storage dot 
set item. So we're going to set an item in local storage in the browser. We don't have to do anything about creating a variable or other sorts of things. It's just set or get, basically. If we want to store that in a sort of a session, then we create variables. But here we're going to store, in quotes, is logged in. Richard, can you say that last part again? You said, you said the set and the get, and if we want to do what, we can create a variable? Set item, we're going to store this into local storage right now, or we're going to get it from local storage. And if we wanted to store what was the value in there to use in the app, then we would create a variable oh, to hold okay. it. When we had set item before, way at the top we had set item, variable, variable. Here we're doing set item with the name of the key. Ultimately, that's what was happening up here anyway. The name of the key was based on the person's email address. So in the browser, stored in there, is a, is a record with a key of the person's email and their password. That's what our first set item did back on line 53. Create a cookie, so to speak, named their email, and in that cookie, store the password. What we're trying to do now is we're creating a cookie named is logged in. And here's where we can set true or false. If they are logged in, is logged in is set to true. When we have the logout function, we're going to have to do set item is logged in false to keep track of being logged in or not. Now, that logically works, but that's not enough for us because we need to s keep track of, well, yeah, they're logged in, but who is logged in? So the way we get to complete that is not with a simple true or false, but we're saying that we're logging in with the current uh, email address. Temp val is temp val in email login. So we're not going to store a simple true or false. That would work in a very basic way to store that we are logged in. But we have multiple users to deal with. So it's going to work a little better that we store the person's email address is the sort of true or false that they are logged in. That does the dual purpose of confirming a person is logged in if there is an email stored in here, if, if it's null or undefined, that's one way that it tells us, no, no one's logged in. And the second purpose is, well, that keeps track of who has logged in based on their email address. So let's make a note there. Uh, our way to uh, confirm someone is logged in to the app and who is logged in to the app via their email. So we're saving a cookie, we're saving a local storage object called that. And what's stored in that is the person's email. The person's email happens to be through our whole if-else login. We've confirmed the person, their email address, we've confirmed their password, that's the person that's logged in. And that is basically true or false. There is something stored there. Right now, is logged in, before we run this, is logged in is set to null or undefined or whatever it says inside the system, meaning basically no one is logged in. But if we go through this login process now, there will be something in this cookie, which is the person's email. We need uh, something very similar there now uh, for, for logout. Let's go to our logout. Uh, so true, they did want to log out. Ultimately, we asked them uh, confirm logout, and if they say true, then okay, they logged out, they changed the page container and so forth. Before that break, 
we then also want to set that. Like I said, if there's nothing stored in that cookie, then they're logged out. False. If there is something stored in that cookie, they are logged in. True. So the exact same syntax. Local storage dot set item. The same item is logged in. Setting it to empty. No space there. If you do put a space there, that's not empty, that's a space. There's no space there. And user logs out. Set the local storage. Let the, set the local source cookie to, that is technically now, is that null or is that undefined? That's null, isn't it? Or is it undefined? It's, it's null, because undefined was it was never defined, so it's null. Null. False, so to speak. So in our login uh, function login, we set something to show we're logged in, true, and then in logout we set it to nothing to show that we're logged out. The way that then this will check, are we logged in, are we logged out, is then going to be a conditional statement. Are we logged in, yes or no, true or false? If we are logged in, then simply take us directly to the uh, PG home. No need to log in, we're already logged in, it's already stored in memory, the account exists, just take us to PG home. Or else, we're not logged in, so do nothing, which takes us to PG Welcome. Doing nothing at the moment automatically takes us to PG Welcome to let them log in or sign up, most likely to sign up, if they were logged in. So we need to do an if-else statement before most of this stuff. We have to go back up to the top because this is processed in order. We'll do it after our variable declarations, before our first function. So near the top, before our first function, we'll create our if else Skeleton if else to check if a user has logged in or not. Then I'm, um, that's uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be processed early on. So early on, it's gonna check uh, does something exist in that cookie, true or false? And if it does exist, then um, log us in. If it doesn't, then uh, let them. Let them proceed to either log in, they might have logged out, or create an account. So we're going to check if the cookie is null. This is another example of we can check if it's either null or if it's actually full of something. Uh, we'll check if it's empty. If it is empty, then all of the stuff will be here that is that uh, console log. This is the block that will be uh, no user logged in. The else will be that the user is logged in.
Okay, so in the if statement, this is the part where we do the get item. Set item was to store this information in the device uh, permanently uh, of who has signed in. So now get item will check has there something has something been stored in that cookie. So local storage dot get item. The item that we're getting is the name of the cookie, the name of the object, which is is logged in. We're saying let's retrieve the data inside of um, inside of that object, inside of that cookie. It's empty. If we have done logout, we've set it to empty. So if we're trying to check it, um, it should trigger it. Now different web browsers actually handle it in different ways, so it's a good idea here also to check it in a couple of different ways. Right here we're checking for one possibility, the possibility of it being empty. A browser may set it to undefined, may set it to null, may set it to empty. Uh, it's better to check it in more than one way. So we can do or. Check if it's this, or check if it's that, or check if it's this, or that, and so forth. And to check or in JavaScript, we use two pipe characters. You hardly, most people hardly use these characters outside of programming, but it's basically shift backslash. Backslash is obviously above your enter key. Slash is the one by the question mark, so obviously I, I know I get mad when people say HTTP, www, backslash, backslash. It's not a backslash. A slash is a slash, a forward slash, I guess, if you must, which I believe technically is also called a solidus. I want backslash, because it leans back, obviously. Shift backslash, two shift backslashes, gives you the pipe character. That means or. Check the first thing to be true, or check another thing, or check another thing. So I'm going to check the exact same thing. To save myself a little bit of effort, I'm going to copy and paste that. The possibilities are that it could also be set to null. or undefined. So another or. So let's check one possibility, or another possibility, or another one, undefined. So the same getter equal to undefined. Before we fully get it working, uh, we should test it, because this is one where um, we have to think about how it's working to make sure that it is working. So just to check, oops, I forgot my double right there. Don't forget that. So we've got the first, we've got the first condition equal to uh, empty or equal to null or, don't forget that, sorry, uh, equal to undefined. I have to double check that for the technicality of it, but yeah, I have to double check that to give you the best answer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 
that could be done as well. Um, in this case, because it, it might be shorter to do it that way, sure. If, if you test that, and, and if that's a good way to do it, we might do it to shorten it. I'm just showing here that if people are not experienced, this is another way to check more than one thing, check this or that, and so forth. But the simpler we can get it, sometimes the better. So, oh, the end of the line? Uh, yes, it just is like the previous lines, but then complete. Let's go ahead and save and test that. Now, before we do anything, check your console right away and see if you get some message. Um, we'll check what the message is. Um, I, I did log in before we did this, but that one's not going to count yet because all of this is logged in, uh, doesn't trigger until we go through the login function. So I don't expect us to automatically log us in yet. We never triggered the set item yet. So this should be set to not logged in. Let me confirm. So I'll go back, run that. No user logged in. OK. I'm going to log in with a user that does exist. OK. So I did log in. I'm going to close it and run the whole thing or refresh it, whatever. Open up the console. User is logged in. So I get the user is logged in. Okay, it's not working yet, and we're not there yet, but user is logged in. If I, again, if I close it completely and I open it again in the if I run it or refresh it, it is remembering that at one point a user has logged in. I'm going to log out. I'm going to log in with the account. I'm going to go to the logout. Confirm logout. Yes, they want to log out. Okay, I'm going to close it completely. Run it again. Console. No user logged in. So it should be confirming that someone has logged in or not. If we confirm that, then we can uh, move us to the PG home. But do you see that logically? You shouldn't have expected to run it and you're automatically logged in because we haven't done that code. But it still said no one's logged in, even though I was logged in, you know, 10 minutes ago. Because a, a user has to pass through uh, function of login for this cookie to be set so that then we can get it. So, yes? How did you get to have it come up so that it says that the user is logged in? You say you logged in and then it went? I just, I logged in, mm -hmm. I closed the browser, oh, closed browser. Okay. or refresh I guess, I closed the browser completely, mm -hmm. and then it should just automatically say that person is logged in. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. So if we are able to keep track of logging in and logging out, this, that's the purpose of that. You see this very commonly, uh, some sort of true or false to keep track of who's logged in. But we need to keep track of who is logged in. And here it's just simply saying no user is logged in or yes, a user is logged in. If you uh, want to kind of also uh, debug this as we're writing it, uh, a slightly more efficient thing or direct thing would be for it to say who is logged in before we log in just for testing purposes. So what I'm saying is you saw that I did log in and I run the code again and then it tells me uh, user is logged in. Uh, it'd be nice if it says who the user is that we expect to be logged in. Now of course as we go through this, I have a plan of what we're going to end up with, and I have already the app completely completed. But as we do this, as you do this yourself and you're figuring it out, I recommend to think about this console output and being verbose and being obvious about it as you work on it. So this is optional, but I'm going to make it say, you know, John Smith is logged in. Janet is logged in, instead of simply 
user is logged in. This is optional. And the way you can do this is, well, we've got, okay, user is logged in. Instead of it saying user, we have to have it dynamically say which user, the one stored in the cookie. So we have local storage dot get item plus, don't forget that plus, quotes is logged in. Then it'll say the name of the, the person's email address plus is logged in. That's how it'll tell you who is logged in because we're storing that information in the is logged in cookie. And I say cookie, but it's not really a cookie. It's a local storage object, but it's just easier to say cookie than local storage object. It's funner and tastier. So now if I, if I run this, uh, it should remember that I've logged in. Does anyone remember which account I logged in with? No need, because it'll tell me in the console. And when I run this, H is logged in. So the last email address that was logged in with is the one that it remembered. And to test it, I'm going to log in this time with J. So set item is logged in was set to that email. I'm not going to log out. I'm going to run the whole project again from scratch. Console. J is logged in. So it's loading up who's logged in. And that's just icing on the cake. That's optional. But as you beta test it, as you alpha test this, uh, it's good to be obvious and verbose. So if that works, <coughs> the point that we're getting to is that um, someone is logged in, take us directly to PG Home. Well, that's the usual code of the current page container dot page container change. So after confirming that someone is logged in. We have the very peculiar syntax here. Don't forget that colon. A few people forgot it last time. Of uh, mobile page contain mobile dash page container dot page container. Method. This was our syntax to move us from screen to screen in jQuery mobile. Don't forget that colon there. It's, uh, uh, very few selectors have that uh, that you may use. Specifically, we're saying we're changing to pound pg home. Don't forget that pound sign. That's the ID of the page we're trying to get to. And then the optional options uh, transition. Anticlimactically, it's not going to work just yet. 
but this is all the valid code. Um, it is confirming that the person is logged in and it's got the code to transition. And we know that that code works, especially if you typed it the same as before. Um, if it doesn't transition, mine didn't either, and that's fine because I've seen this before. Uh, I do expect this to happen. Uh, it seems to be a quirk, which is a nice way of saying a bug, that uh, this won't, uh, this might not fully work until we get to the next step, which is that it's going to, um, when we, when we put it in the, in the apps shell for it to be a real uh, app, that's when it does work. I, I know, I've seen this, I've done this in different classes before, and this happens at this point anticlimactically. That's why it is like the last thing we do at, at this point. So if it doesn't automatically go to the next screen, that's okay. It, it will, trust me. It's just that at the moment it might not. And for the moment we can just live with it, that it's not quite doing it, but it will do it, because we are confirming that the output does say you are logged in. It's just that there's a bug that it doesn't actually move it, but it's fine. So for the time being, we will be still having to do this login. Uh, so hopefully you are using nice, easy to remember passwords and logins, because you will have to be logging in. But yes, eventually it will work automatically to take us from the PG um, welcome to PG home. Let me confirm with um, Chrome, because we were doing it in Fire. I was using Firefox at least. So a at a dot com, or even easier, a at a dot a, password a, password a. Again, just at a certain point, you have to create real things, just something for it to work. And I'm testing it in another browser just to get a second opinion. Thank you, ready to go. Great, log in. A at a dot a, log in with password a, go. It sees who I've logged in with. Can load it all up again completely in Chrome. It is seeing that a is logged in, it will animate it to the next screen eventually. It just doesn't quite do it, so we will have to live with logging in, but it will work. Trust me, I'm a professional. <coughs> now there isn't there is another option in there is another option in in jQuery Mobile where we can force a refresh which does move you from this screen to the next screen. But then that extra option conflicts when we get it to the device. So if I show you that code to force it, it'll work as a web project. But then when we move it into an actual app, it won't work and we'll have to remove it. So either or. Do you want it to work now? Uh, so we add the code, but then we have to remove it later. Or don't add the code now, but it will work later. So, either or. We'll leave the code as is because this will work a little later. Let's um, take one more break to see if this all works, and then we'll get back to do more work on this project. So it's 8.15, take a break until um, 8.25, uh, and then we'll go on. <coughs> 